Popping, you did cool to the game, rides for freeze, the best show in the city, the county, the jails, the ocean, the middies, <laughs> Pakistan, and the world. Craig, you dig right now with a, a special guest. You dig what I'm saying, real quick background. Uh, we was at work, we ain't gonna say where we work yet because you know they might want to <laughs> check from the video, but you know, we were just busting it down and you know, talking and talking for you know, a few hours and stuff. And he was the only dude my complexion that was there, so we, <laughs> we just we just busted down Stick for together, real. Together, you together, dig? Together. You Stick dig? Together. My guy, Sir Marcus, what's up? Already, what it do? What it do? How y'all feeling? Man, everything straight, man. Everything straight, man. We we right. around this Morgan campus, just kind of you know, swerving around. You dig? Stomping grounds, yeah, you know, stomping you know? grounds. You know, that's where it all started. That's <laughs> where it all started for me, yeah. You, you know, you, you 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 still go here, right? I still go here. I'm still on roll, still on roll. Okay, cool. What year are you? Uh, well, you know, I ain't gonna tell you my original year. Yeah, okay. But it's looking okay. like a 2020 year. You know what I'm saying? Hey, as long as you, as long as you get it, yeah. as long as you get it, that's all that matters. As long as, as you, you want that it. stage, that's the most that's important thing. Matters. Now I'm saying, so you technically you're going in the senior. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, senior. cool. Yep. That's what yep. it is. That's what it is. Senior. Yeah. That's what it is. Man. So what's, what's some of like your beginnings, like when you? Because all the first of all, what is your title? What do you do? Outside of just school, like outside of school, like I'm a um, people like an internet personality. Okay. So originally, I started as I was at Morgan. I had a group. We was called them niggas from Twitter. Shout out to my boys, Daquan, Jahi, Sam, um, Isaiah, all y'all. You know, Steve too. So I started out with them making videos, uh, making comedy videos, putting them on Twitter and Facebook. And from okay. there, I went to Vine. But I kind of was late to Vine. By the time I got on Vine, Vine was dying. So within a year, I only amassed like 38,000 followers. You know, compared to hundreds of thousands. And I only had 38,000 and Vine shut down. So once that happened, I moved to Instagram and I've been busting on Instagram ever since. Well, you might have seen some of my memes, maybe even some of my videos, maybe if you're looking, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and I just been doing that, busting it down and just trying to make something happen on the side. You know, right. it's, it's, it's almost 2020. There's so many ways to make money. You can do it online. Mm -hmm. You can do it anywhere. So it's just, it's just fun. People, you know, they love it. They laugh. And as long as they happy, it makes me happy. Yeah, that's so I can't that's even, I can't even complain. For the people. So what, what, uh. So what made you start, what made you kind of, uh, you and your guys go into that dealing with comedy? Is it kind of like y'all in y'all circle just making jokes? Yeah, it was, so we always, you know, we always used to pack on, Joan, whatever yeah. you want to call it, we always did up with each other. We was like, yo, this is kind of funny, like, we should try recording it. And so we did, and we just yeah. had fun with it. It was never so much about the clout, it was just more so having fun yeah. and, and doing what we do. And yeah. now I just kind of do it as a thing where it's like, if... I just wake up and stuff just comes in my head. I'm like, let me let me post about that. Let me make yeah, something about that. Yeah. And I end up doing it that way. It's just life is funny, man. Like yeah. life really is funny. And there's always something you can make a joke about. What was like your first viral video? It had to be in the Twitter days. My first viral video actually came on Vine, but it moved on to Twitter. So okay. it's this video of a newscaster and she's like pulling her pants down. Okay. And right before she pulls her pants down, the video goes blank. And then it shows my face, and I got like this real fat face. And I'm like, what the fuck, yo? That was gonna be the best part. And people still bring that up. Like, it's, That's tight. it's just all over the place. Like, it's crazy. And it's, it's just, it's fun. It's mm. real fun. Yeah. So, what? So, um, didn't you tell me you guys did stand? You guys I did. I did. So, you can catch okay. me at Sidebar on Mondays. I do stand up comedy. Uh, it's dark. It's a dark, it's dark comedy. It's dark humor. So, if you like dark humor, it's definitely the place to be. Sidebar on Mondays at 9 p.m. I'm usually there until like maybe 12, 1. Okay. And I do stand up there. So, come right. check me out. Cool, cool. So, how, how, um, how do you, you enjoy stand up more? Or do you kind of enjoy? I enjoy stand, stand up more because okay. it's more of an adrenaline rush. Because, like I said, mm. you get up there doing stand up. If somebody don't, if they don't like it, they're not. It's gonna be quiet. So okay. you know, you gotta kind of keep the crowd. It's like you versus the people. Yeah. Can you get them on your side? And I like that type of rush. I like that type of pressure. Like right. it makes me perform better. Than so we're like, so that that kind of. Instead of like this kind of it fuels you to try to make another joke. It, yeah, it fuels okay. me to make a joke quickly. So like if something doesn't go over well, uh -huh. I'm like, alright, let me try something else. Let me switch it yeah. up. Or sometimes I come up with stuff on the spot. So it's just the old I always try to get them on my side. Like bombing is inevitable. Everybody's gonna bomb right now and then. Yeah, every, course, every car knows that. But I take it on stride. Like I love it. When they love yeah. it, I love it. Even when they when I'm bombing, I still love it. I just always talk about the time you bomb. Man, so I was down there. Everybody knows um it's called Motorhouse Club or something like that. It's, it's Motorhouse. Motorhouse. Yeah, Motorhouse. So Wednesday, they had a Wednesday at a college night. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't know what your audience is like, but when I was there, it was a bunch of white, you know, Johns Hopkins I'm kids. Audience, but oh, oh, all right. A couple whites. The real niggas in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, nah, so anyway, so it was a bunch of Johns Hopkins kids. So yeah. I'm like, oh, like my material isn't really geared towards them, but I'm going to go out there and wing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I get up on the stage. First joke does all right i'm like all right i may have a chance they may be they may be seasoned you know yeah. that's season second joke bombs i'm like oh shit third joke bombs Ooh. fourth joke bombs Ooh. fifth joke it bombs so bad like you can hear the lights like the lights i don't know you can hear lights <laughs> move but you hear the lights moving so i did that and then it just it just 
it didn't go well. And I was like, mm. man, it was only like 45 seconds in. So, you know, that's no time. You got to have a solid five minutes. By 45 seconds in, I just, I, I was like, all right, man, y'all have a good night. I'm out. I got on stage. <laughs> the promoter ran up. He was in the bathroom. That's how quick I was. He was still in the bathroom. Damn. So he ran out and was like, yo, wait, what's going on? I'm like, man, I'm done. I, I, I'm fucking with me. And then yo, that made him mad. So now when I go back to Motor House, bed? it made him a little upset. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you can't really be away from the scene. So yeah. now when I go to Motor House, I'm like last on the list to go because I didn't piss them off. But it's all good. How, how, long, how long was your set supposed to be? My set was going to be five solid minutes. Ooh, I only yeah, did 45 So those minutes seconds. are critical. Man. Critical. In any or any, like, mm -hmm. five minutes set may not sound like shit to a consumer. But right. when you're the person producing those five minutes, it's, it's going by fast. It's like it's like being in the recording studio. Yep. And you're trying to produce a song. And it may take you five days to produce mm -hmm. a song that's only two minutes and thirty seconds. It took me five. It took me forty five seconds, and mm -hmm. I was out. I was like, I'm done. I was sweating coming down my face. I it was funny it, though. I know that feeling. Like, I, had, I looked back at the video and I laughed. And I was uh -huh. like, ah, like that was kind of funny though. Like yeah. that, that shit was probably the funniest part of the whole set. Getting uh, walking off. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much so. It. We should be talking a little bit about comedy. Do you uh, who, do you have like favorite comedians that you look up to, whether it's new comedians now or some from the older days? In the older days, well, in terms of like internet comedians, back in like 2014, there was okay. this dude Retro Spectro, like okay. Lean Squad. Okay. Like he was one of the big ones. That I was like, all right, this dude's funny. I kind of want to take after it. Mm -hmm. If I was to say stand up comedians, I'd probably say like. Um, I don't know if y'all know, but T.K. Kirkland, he's one of the OGs. Course, he's an OG. T.K. Kirkland's funny as man. shit. Like, well, I need a yes. quick story, quick story yeah, about him. Yeah. I hit him up one day on Instagram, like, yo, you inspiration to me. That I just like maybe a year ago. I'm like, right. yo, I seen you on Vlad TV. I seen you yeah, on Breakfast course, Club. Like, I really fuck with everything you're doing. He uh -huh. be back like, man, thank you for that comment, young man. He older than a lot of people think. And the way he came back at me, I thought he was gonna say, yeah, that's what's up, my nigga. But nah, he was like, yeah, I appreciate you, young man. Uh, yeah, I'm like, honorable, oh, honorable man, honorable man, G. very honorable. So yeah, him so. and probably I say Martin Lawrence for sure. Because when, I, well, yeah, for sure. When I go back and watch the Def Comedy Jam, uh -huh. he was just the best MC I ever seen. So yeah. they definitely, definitely like. Huge OGs that I shout out. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So, um, just one last little comedy thing. Do you think this kind of left left field with you? But do you think uh, Monique got a case against Netflix? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not, and I'm not saying that. So here's my thing. I'm not saying that as a man versus woman thing. I just think like she just hasn't been as active as all these other comedians that are getting these special deals, right. and she's not pulling the numbers. Say like Dave Chappelle or Kevin Hart, or even even maybe a Tiffany Haddish. People hear on Tiffany Haddish, but she's still in her badge. So yeah, I don't sure. think she'll win. If she does, it'd be cool. Yeah. But I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. So boy, I'm not boy. I mean, I haven't been boycotting Netflix. I support the people, yeah. but I'm not boycotting Netflix. You know, I got too many of my favorite shows. Yeah, you did. So I'm, I I'm, finished I, watching The Irish. I got finished watching The Irish. <laughs> I watch it an hour a day. So uh -huh. and then the next three days it'll be done. It's a three hour movie. Yeah. They got all the It's kinda like that. watching like the Godfather again. You just gotta <laughs> train your train your eyes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I watch a lot of mafia stuff, so that'd be cool to me. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Goodfellas fan. Huge oh, man, mafia that's one of fan. The, Casino. Yeah. All oh, of them. Hey everybody, it's Sir Marcus. Check out my boy Rise with Freeze. We in the yeah. comfortable car. We lay back in the Maserati. <laughs> everybody can't ride like us. Everybody Ooh. can't live like us. If you wanna get with a Maserati ride, give my boy Rise like Freeze. He's yeah, doing dude. it big. You heard me? Do 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 your top five mob movies. Top five mob movies. I gotta say, all right, in no particular order. No order. We no got order. Goodfellas, mm -hmm. Casino, Casino, The Irishman. Mm -hmm. There's another mob movie. It's called The Irish Something. That's another mob movie. Okay. That one came out on um, Netflix only. Mm -hmm. And then top five probably be, it's not really a mafia movie, mm -hmm. but I would say Scarface. I would say okay. Scarface. It's not really a mafia yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. but I definitely would put Scarface in there okay. just because Al Pacino. Like, you yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. I dig it. You I can't dig say it. that with Al Pacino. And, and Godfather will probably honorable mention just because it's so long for me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, I, uh, I probably see no order. Godfather 2, um, the John Gotti biopic that oh, was yeah. on HBO. Yeah. Um, yeah, Casino. Uh, uh, the Sammy Gravano biopic oh, yeah, yeah, that was on NBC. It was mm -hmm. like two hours and mm -hmm. fifty minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, fifth Goodfellas because it was so enjoyable. It, it was, was just so it, enjoyable. It was fun. It was, yeah, it was fun to watch. It, it, it was hilarious. Right? So what? Like so, right now you know social media is at a at a. Uh, it's like the wild wild west. It is. You know what I mean? And, and, and so many uh, influences and so many opinions that can that can just. Hit the internet, it could be false as hell, but they can just it takes spew off. all these debates and opinions, and it's Dangerous. not even the actual, the actual uh, fact of what's going on. We never honestly find out the real facts unless we were there, in my opinion. Right. So, how do you feel about this developing 
this developing case about what's going on with Juice World. Rest in peace, bro. Uh, I think, man, like when I when I look at all these young rappers, like, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm a big, I don't know about y'all, but I'm a big conspiracy person. Like, I know y'all want to hear that, but it's, girl, it's man, just, I just, real. I feel. If you look at his lyrics, he says, no, we're not making it past 21. Mm -hmm. And you look at the type of stuff that these rappers get into. If you go from rags to riches, which most of these rappers do, how are you still depressed? Like, what is going on in your personal mm -hmm. life? And it seems like it's the industry behind the scenes that's breaking these rappers down. Because you can't tell me a broke kid or even a suburb kid that went to not having much money yeah. and they got a bunch of money. You would think most people, and I know in my case, I'd be living a better life, yeah. but it seems like their life gets worse, like all of a sudden they fall into Xanax and, yeah. and worse drugs, like before they was just smoking weed maybe, and it was cool yeah, yeah. now it's like become a little, 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 yeah, little, 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 little something, you know, yeah. I'm not trying to say do but it it's the, it's the truth though, <laughs> it's like, the truth yeah. and then all of a sudden, now they doing harder drugs and they fall yeah. into depression, so it's like, what did the industry do to them, yeah. they getting all these markings, uh, these different tattoos on their body like, what did the industry really do to them, for them yeah. to be acting like this, and then for them to be dying so young, it's not normal it's like, like if you think about it, it's, it's true. Really... It's, I've never seen as many rappers die in this last fifteen years. Like, yeah. it's, it's regular for a, a rapper to die. And it's like, bro, like, like you know, back in the nineties when it was like it was like Pac, Easy, yeah. Big, Pun. It was like so spread, spread but, out. It was wild. But, yeah, but the more the drugs play, a, I won't say that just the drugs playing a role, but like you said, industry pressure. Because regardless of any industry, when you're a star, a lot of performing. Mm -hmm. There's a, it's not a nine to five lifestyle, mm -hmm. and I think that's why a lot of people fall in love with it. That can hustle and live like that, but it's you got to sustain, you gotta especially sustain. if you're not healthy and you're in whatever. Everyone's body react different to chemicals, mm -hmm. so whatever, however your body's reacting to stuff, and if you get healthy, if you're getting your checkups and stuff, it's it's so much to attain because you have to keep up with what your your impact on the industry is. Because mm -hmm. when they done with you, they done with you. Your impact has no no you know. You know what I'm saying? So Cutting, going. If you ain't producing hits, you on to the wayside. Yeah, and like man. a lot of rappers, like, you know, like Kodak and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. they, I, I remember watching a lot of Kodak where he even said the money he has is not his money. He don't own nothing. It's like they're just under a contract mm -hmm. to the industry. And once the industry's done, like, pimping them out, they like pimps and hoes. Like, once they yeah. done pimping them out, you going to the wayside. You know and you yesterday's news, man. And you got to just come in with your business right. Mm -hmm. You got to have a good right. people around you. I believe. This is why I think you got to have good people around you. You gotta have firm beliefs because they'll make you do anything. Mm -hmm. And you just gotta stand for what you believe in. And yeah. I think a lot of these young rappers, all they see is the one million check they're getting, and they don't realize that the parties they go into, their record labels using their money to pay for it. Absolutely. The car they just got, the record label used their money to uh -huh. get to it. Then when it's time to get paid, they only getting Even a little if you probably pocket. ask them to do a, a favor for you, like, oh, well, y'all handle this. They'll probably charge you for uh, mm -hmm. the phone or, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> having to go phone, to the right, store. Right, you, nigga bought a honey yeah, bun, you, so he gonna, you, know. you peed over there, so we're going to charge you for that. Like, all right, come on. Like, you know but, what I'm saying? But like, in, in some basic terms, if, say, if it wasn't the music industry and it was a Fortune 500 company, wouldn't it kind of be the same shit? But see, that's the thing. I think, I believe all jobs, with mm -hmm. these Fortune 500 companies, you know, I believe it's all BS. I believe mm. we as humans should not be working nine to fives, man. It's and not like, normal. Like, and I'm not saying that any employers watching, like, you know, I'm, we good workers, we're good workers. But I'm saying the whole concept of a nine to five, but really it's more like a nine to six now, is complete BS. Like, you're telling me for 40 hours a week, five days a week, I got to do this BS job that really has no meaning in the grand scheme of life. Yeah. I'm away from my family. I got to work this job for 20 years. And then hopefully after 20 years, I can retire if... I did everything the right way. It's just, it's not natural for us to be working these types of jobs. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you have an eight hour day, but you're kind of spending 10, 11 mm -hmm. hours preparing for it, mm -hmm. getting up, showering, mm -hmm. driving there. And, and Lord knows if you live here and you got a job out in the county or you drive yep. out DC, you come on. Yep. So it's, you wake up thinking yeah. about work, man. Yeah. You wake up thinking about work. You get to work, you think about work. On the way home from work, you just think about work. You go to sleep, you might even dream of work. <laughs> I've done that a couple times. I wake yeah. up in a cold sweat because I'm dreaming of work, thinking yeah. I'm at work. And then when I get to work, I'm like, man, like this yeah. again. Because I see on social media too, like, I don't really post about things that go on at work, but you see like a lot of people like, maybe because it's the cubicle life, people just kind of post about if my, if my boss eat these chips one more time, and I'm like, damn, like simple stuff. Like, <laughs> come on, man, you worrying about? Yeah, I get what yeah. you're saying. This is like, I guess it's a psychosis of being somewhere you don't want to be, but you have to be. So it's like mm -hmm. a lot. I ain't really like school. I ain't like being in school. Mm -hmm. I didn't like getting up. So it's kind of like I had to be here. I guess it's like you kind of transfer that into the nine to five because like, okay, I gotta survive. I don't want to live home, and mm -hmm. I don't really, I don't really believe in the passion mm -hmm. enough to to invest in it yet 
But you know, it's 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 it's, it's a thing out here, man. You it's know what I mean? Thing. How how important is entrepreneurship and just having a business mind to what you do to to everything that very, you do? Very, I say very important. So when everybody wants to be a boss, and like when I say this, I want people to think like, everybody wants to be a boss when no one wants to be in the work. Absolutely, so for me, like. Man. Absolutely. This social media thing is fun, but I'm trying to build something from it. Mm -hmm. so, but with that being said, I got to post every day. Mm -hmm. Like, I got to check up. I got to network with people every day. Mm -hmm. And with that, some people get tired. Like, it seems like people work harder for a boss than they do themselves. Yes. Like, a boss will stay on you, and you'll get the work done. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you get the freedom to do it yourself, you get lazy. You right. get complacent. Yeah. That's why I say everybody's not meant to really be a boss. Because mm -hmm. if I'm thinking I want to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to work as hard for myself. I'm going to work even harder than I did for myself. Than I will for a boss. Like I'm gonna work harder for me than I did mm -hmm. for you. So, but some people it's the opposite. They work harder for a boss mm -hmm. than they do for themselves, and then they wonder why their business isn't taking off, or they yeah. wonder why they can't get nowhere. You really have to like struggle and do everything yourself. That's Absolutely. why it take. That's why they say it costs to be a boss. You gotta pay yeah. to play. Yeah. You have to put in the work on your own. You have to keep going. You gotta push yourself, mm -hmm. just like you know someone else pushing you. You gotta be able to push yourself, right? Because a lot, since it's your business, some people won't push you. Because like it's not my business, it's yours. Yeah. It takes ten years to be overnight success. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> overnight don't happen overnight. At all. But that's what someone told me. Like when it came to social media, like success don't happen overnight, but then it does. So by that, you can grind for like five years straight, and then that one night you post something and it's gone, yeah, like it's gone. on and popping. Yeah. But it, that's the that's the development there, mm -hmm. and that's what kind of you learn your niche. And I think, mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, the order is that. You learn the foundation, you learn a routine, mm -hmm. and then you find your style, mm -hmm. and then you find your, your your approach, and then you figure everything out. I think one of my keys was that I, I instead of before I pursued it all the way as pursued anything all the way as an act, I looked up the business mm -hmm. and the history of the business, and looked up how the business was structured right now, and paid attention to every development. So. I recognize YouTube was going to start monetizing 2010 11 with Vivo because mm -hmm. they had different versions of official music videos come out. I'm like, oh, that's where the revenue come in through. Right. So then you see everything kind of developing when you think artist has an official page, but that's kind of like their built page in order to create revenue. They still may not own that page. Right. So it's just when you learn about that, those things and you figure out, okay, this is how the game is played. Now let me figure my style out to win. The game developed, I developed too, but I'm still remaining the core. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that it's that transparency, man. Yeah, definitely cool transparency. transparency. So what what um what what do you feel like is the is the most like I don't wanna say that difficult, but what do you feel like is probably the most frustrating part with uh being a social media influencer because there's so many. It's it's it's, it's, it's a thousand, it's a million, it's man, everyone's it's, trying it's, to go viral, yeah, everyone's stealing me. Everybody's stealing me. Everybody, you know. So I say the hardest part about being a social media person or at least trying to be you yeah. know what I mean, is is the consistency like you gotta mm -hmm. be consistent there may be some days where you don't you get discouraged because say you post something you thought was fire and yeah. then it's like why does it only get like a hundred likes like why does it only get yeah. like what this should be in the thousands by now and it, and it happens more often than you think mm -hmm. and it's just that you can't get discouraged mm -hmm. i say that's the biggest thing is you got your hopes up for one thing mm -hmm. and that one thing it just goes all the way down yeah. you have to be and it, and it gets discouraging because you're like man i put thought and effort into this one I thought it was gonna bang, mm -hmm. did not bang. Like I'm yeah. still at the same follower count, and it yeah. happens a lot. It's gonna happen a lot, man. For anybody that's out there trying it, they already know mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard, but the rewards are like worth it. Like I remember when I first hit 10k, I was like, oh shit, like yeah. 10k. Then I hit 15k, I was like, oh shit, 15k. You talking about followers? I'm talking followers, okay, okay, followers. Okay, okay, okay. And then I hit 20k, and I was like, oh shit, like mm -hmm. now I'm at 23. I'm like, oh, it's working. It's mm -hmm. working, but slowly. Mm -hmm. And I think in the beginning, it's just you got you just gotta be consistent. And after a while, because it took me like honestly. Like, on Vine, it only took me a year to get to, like, 38,000, but the app was dead. On Instagram, it took me, like, uh, a year and a half to get to, like, 10K, like, okay. just 10K alone. And then another another six months just to hit the 15, and then yeah. it's just been a whole grind because, like, it's every, there's, there's creators everywhere, man. Like, there's creators everywhere. It's so saturated now. It's like you're trying to break out in front of the pack. And I ain't paying yeah. for no shout-outs or nothing. I'm trying to do it on my own, yeah. you know. Okay. So, it's, so, do you, so do you feel like... um? You like so say like uh the spongebob meme of course is one of the most popular mm -hmm. ones now do you feel like if you're doing a meme do you feel like it's you'll try to uh make a funnier joke in the spongebob wave or try to introduce something new so with me i, tr I try to look at trends and follow the trends but when i follow the trend i try to put my own spin on it because okay. people love originality like creativity so if you take a trend and put your spin on it you've not only doubled your chance of maybe getting on the explore page 
but you double your chance of someone saying this dude's original. Yeah. I'm gonna follow him. He's yeah. he's following trends, but he's putting his own spin, so it it works a lot better. And I, I I've been studying social media for like a long time, like since 2015, and I've seen mm -hmm. the trends switch and switch. So right now on Instagram, you know, well Vine it was six second videos. Everybody's attention span is short. Yeah. And then Instagram it's like memes. Everybody, everybody's loving memes, like oh, all memes. dank memes, dark humor memes, oh, work memes, memes, all the types of memes, memes, relationship memes. Oh, those yeah. are the worst ones, bro. <laughs> See, those those happen, man. See, you get to an argument with a girl or a situation go. They got the meme. The they got the meme. And shit. They got it like, like ready in their drafts. Like yeah. I'm gonna post this shit as soon as must've she fucking up. It must have been. Like it must have been like as soon as he as soon as he fucking up, I'm posting this one. It's like those be the cancer ones, bro. And it's just so many me everybody's loving memes mm -hmm. and that's like anybody i say getting into the game like videos and memes like people love videos if it's funny and mm -hmm. people love memes if you can do that and stay consistent in network over time you will be successful it happens that's quicker true. for some and then it happens slower for some but eventually if you keep doing what you're supposed to do it'll mm -hmm. happen so last Definitely. question where do you see you taking your brand and I won't say next five, next few years. We can see the, the next, the next couple levels. So here's taking. my plan. This is my plan. You gotta get a whole spiel. Yeah, I ain't gonna you know. give you a whole spiel. Yeah. Here's, here's a short thing. I want to have merchandise and I want to host tours. So if I can Ooh. build up a following, a following big enough to where I can host tours for these new age rappers, because yeah. you gotta think this is Generation Z coming up. They yeah. know that they know these rappers like Lil Tech or Lil Mosey. I truthfully didn't really know them like they that, but the younger generation, my followers do. Okay. So if I can get big enough to host tours for these upcoming rappers, it'll only build on top of it. I just want to host smart. some tours, man. TK Kirkland way. Yeah, TK Kirkland way. Shout out to T, <laughs> T to the saying. motherfucking K. I'm gonna send this video to him. Hopefully, he oh, responded to yeah, T to the shout motherfucking K. K. Like I, yeah, I, I got this back. I Already you free. Big, you know, get your social media on. Follow you know, me on out. IG at Sir Marcus with two underscores, and I just made a TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. Okay, same cool. username. I'm everywhere, baby. I'm trying to get my face. Let's 2020 is my year. What's 2019 was cool, but yeah. 2020 will be better. New so. decade, new money. You Check, know, it so. Check it out. Rise with Freeze. I told you all the best show in the city, the county, the colleges, the McDonald's, the yes, Burger Kings, the Foot Lockers, the World. Craig, you did. Yes, sir, sir Marcus, Young Freeze. Motion. Yo, yo, this is Sir Marcus. Make sure I tune into my meme page at Sir Marcus with two underscores. Mm -hmm. Also tune into my my TikTok where I post original content at mm -hmm. Sir Marcus two underscores. I'll catch you on there. Tell your friends, family, your girlfriend, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, ah. tell everybody, tell your pets, tell everybody about Indeed. me. I'm coming up. <laughs>